Welcome back everyone and thank you for stopping by to see me again at Everything Home. I want to do, share with you today a project that I created out of a few Dollar Tree items and some items that I already had laying around the house. I bought two tall taper pillar candles, a plaid checked orange scarf, and a small roll of burlap ribbon all from the Dollar Tree. The leaves, berry vine, and the jute twine I already had on hand. So gather up some supplies, put on your crafting shirt, throw your hair up, and let's get busy. Come along with me. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Everything Home. I'm Renee. And today I thought, because it's a nice rainy day here in Tennessee where I live, that we'd do a real fun craft that's simple and easy and really cost efficient. Um, a lot of the things you can use from home, but I did get a few items from our local Dollar Tree because I loved Dollar Tree as much as I love to go to the goodie stores. As a matter of fact, Dollar Tree's on my list of goodie stores because to me, you can't get anything better than buying it for a dollar. And sometimes... You can get it cheaper at the Dollar Tree than you can a thrift store or a Goodwill. So anyway, that's my little ramble about that. But as you can see in the picture, um, we're going to start with, I got a couple of these little white tall pillar candles from the Dollar Tree. Now, I know they're nothing fancy, they don't have a scent, anything like that, but if you want to light up things in the evening and make it cozy and nice or do a little centerpiece for a holidays, um, there's so many things you can do with them just by decorating them up a little bit. And so I knew I wanted to do something with the candles. And as I was walking around, I saw this cute little plaid or checked, well, it reminds me of the buffalo check, but it's, it's orange and black for Halloween. I thought that is a cute little scarf. And it's kind of see-through. So it gave me the idea that, huh, how cute that would look wrapped around one of these candles because as as it burns down that light's still going to shine through that scarf and you're going to see that pattern of that check uh, that gives me a good idea so we're going to upscale these little guys here and first thing i'm going to do is start with my cheaters because i'm getting old and i want to make sure i see what i'm doing so i don't mess it up not saying I won't mess it up because, you know, this is kind of one of those videos where I'm just doing it as I go. But we'll see. So come on with me and let's get this figured out. Now, first thing I want to tell you that I did with these candles is you got a sticker on the back. Usually you can peel stickers off, but sometimes those little buggers don't come off. Now, if this were a material that were not see-through, I wouldn't have minded the stickers. I could have kept them towards the back of the candle, etc. But in this instance, I wanted to make sure that nothing would show through. Um, so I took those stickers off, and let me tell you, those little buggers were on there. They were on there for broke. I used some Goo Gone in my, in my craft room, my crazy chaotic craft room that is not a posh, buff, fancy anything, because everything in my craft room I have upcycled, used... I, I, I don't go out and buy all that fancy stuff because this is my workspace. So what you see is what you get, y'all. This I'm keeping it real. I'm keep like I said, I keep it real. Um, I stay true. So I can be uniquely me, and you can be uniquely you. So be be gentle with me about my mix match craft room because one of these days, one of these days, maybe we'll do a DIY and we'll redo this whole room and make it all match pretty. But anyway, I always keep some Goo Gone. I love the Goo Gone. It's great. I always keep a little bottle of that in my craft room. And if I don't have Goo Gone, I have used like olive oil or vegetable oil. And it'll help get stickers off too. It does a great job. So you don't have to go out and buy yourself some Goo Gone. And I always, always keep a bottle of alcohol. Because after I get the stickers off and they've got that greasiness and I want to decorate, I don't want that greasiness on there. So I wipe down my glass, any glass I'm working with, with alcohol. Just plain old alcohol. Uh, doesn't cost but a few pennies. But I'm telling you, it's a lifesaver. 
So I always keep those two things. So I took the stickers off, wiped it down with alcohol. Good, it's nice and clean. And then I took my scarf, and the width of the scarf, lo and behold, was almost the exact size of the candle, which was perfect. That's what I wanted. So I wrapped it around the candle. And then I cut it so to where I knew that it would fit just, just, just about perfectly. If there's a little excess, that's fine. I can cut that off. But I wanted to get it as close as I could. And then I used my first place. place yeah. Wow, I can't speak today. I'm sorry. It must be the rain. But I took my first piece and I used it as a template to cut my second piece. So I've got these two little pieces of scarf that are almost the same. And what we're going to do is decoupage them on. Now, a lot of you crafters, I'm sure, know what decoupage is. And I'll tell you right now, I use Mod Podge. I use it a lot. But I save my Mod Podge for things that I know I'm going to want to wash or put in the dishwasher or, you know, because there are different brands of Mod Podge that you can get that are dishwasher safe. So that's my special glue, okay? For regular little craft things like this, and you know, I may tear these apart and reuse the glass jars after the candle wax melts down. I don't know, but it, it it's just decorative. So I'm not too concerned. I make up my own, my own decoupage glue. And I just simply, I buy the Elmer's glue by the gallons. Yes, by the gallons, because a gallon will last me a long, long time. But I do use it a lot because I do a lot of decoupaging. But I'll put the Elmer's glue in a little jar like this. And then I'll add some water to it and I'll keep stirring it until it's kind of a consistency of a, oh, oh a, a kind of a whipping cream consistency. Um, not super, super runny because I don't want it running off the material, but I also don't want it super thick. Stir that up real good. When you're done using it, nice thing is, you've already got it mixed up. If you use a little mason jar, a little pickle jar, or something like this, you can put the lid on, you can save it, use it again and again and again. So that is what I use for, or I'm going to use for this project. Now, I am also going to use my handy dandy, look at this, it's, it's, it, 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 this is the, the fanciest, the fanciest hot glue gun tray you'll ever find. It's an old baking pan. And look, I, I mean, I don't know if you can see, can you see that? Look at that. Isn't that something? And you know, I don't pick and peel that little speckles of hot glue out of there because I think if this thing looked beautiful, that'd mean I didn't craft. I didn't do nothing but set it around and say, look, it's my hot glue tray. This is really, I'm telling you, my hot glue tray. And it looks it. And that's good. That's fine. Keeps things from getting burnt. It holds my gun just fine. I don't need any kind of fancy dancy holder. I'm just telling you, I, I, I keep it real. I, I Things that, uh, you know, a lot of us people love to craft and we'll watch something or try to figure something out and think, well, I can't do that. I don't have all that stuff. Yes, you can. Use what you got. That's what I'm all about. Use what you have. Keep it real. All right. We're going to take this little piece of cloth and what I discovered is when you're using something slippery like this to decoupage, a lot of times it'll move around on you. I don't want it to move around on me. I want to get a nice, tight, smooth, even piece around there, especially since it's got the um, pattern. I want to keep that pattern nice and straight. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm just, and, and hot glue does not hold glass together. I'm just telling you that right now. It, it's not meant for that. It doesn't, but it will tack something to glass. So, I am just using this simply to get a good tack so that I can put my fabric around it nicely and smoothly without it slipping all over. So, I'm just going to put me a little line of hot glue down the glass. And I'm working a little quick because hot glue will dry quickly on glass. Now, be careful. You know, we all know it's hot. Hot glue, hot, hot, hot. Yeah, be careful. Watch yourself. It's hot. I know that. You know that. Now see, even that didn't tack real good. So I'm just going to put another little bead and I'm going to tack it as I go so it'll stay better. Oh, that one's good. That one's good. I, I just kind of want to make sure it's going to stay where I put it. All right. 
But always be careful when you're using hot glue. My fingers are so tough. I, I, I live on a farm. I told you I live on the Double R Ranch. And I do a lot of farm work. I do a lot of outside work. My, my fingers are tough. I do so much crafting and use the hot glue gun so much. I'm very used to it. But you can really get a serious burn. I've gotten some pretty good burns from it. So be careful. Now, since I've got that tacked, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put me a generous amount. I, you know... I'm getting more southern every day. I can I can hear it. I, I'm thinking these these folks are going to think that I'm just crazy because of the way I talk. But it, it just is what it is. When in Rome, when in Rome, and, and I'm picking it up more and more and more. I'm originally from Northern Ohio, believe it or not, Northern Ohio. Yes, yes. Um, as our our sweet friends here would say, you still have some of that Yankee accent. Well, yeah, I do, but when I go back home to Ohio, they say, you got some of that southern accent. So I get a kick out of that. Just a little tidbit there that's not necessary, but it was cute. All right, I've got that, that Elmer's glue or the decoupage glue all around the glass. Now I laid it flat, and I'm going to try, I ain't guaranteeing you, but I'm going to try to roll this as tightly as I can and this is where it comes in handy that I tacked the side so it doesn't move around. And I'm going to try to keep that pattern as neat and square as I can. And I may have to move it around a bit. And it may not be absolutely perfectly square, straight, you know. And, and with that, I say, who cares? Who cares? You're getting the general gist of it. You're getting the idea if you can kind of keep it straight. It's going to turn out cute, trust me. Now you might say, well, I, I'm going all the way around and there's this extra material. Don't I want to cut that off? Well, you can. Absolutely. As long as you got it to where you want it to be, you can. Well, if I knew where I stuck my little scissors here, there they're hiding. Uh, not the most organized. I, I work on that daily. Uh, but I'm going to cut this excess off then. And wherever this attaches, it's going to be the back of my candle, which is another reason why I took uh, the tab off. Now I'm going to put some more glue all along here where I'm going to reattach that because I want it to have a nice hold and give it something to tack to and finish rolling it. And then I'm going to set this little guy up and I'm just going to kind of wiggle the material around in the back so that I can try to make sure that it's all lined up as best as I can. And like I said, that's going to be the back so I'm not too awful concerned. Now, if this were paper, and I were decoupaging paper, I would take, and I'll show you sometime in another video, but I would take some saran wrap, or if you don't have saran wrap, in a pinch, a regular plastic grocery bag, and I would lay that over top, and then rub it through the plastic wrap because it won't stick to the glue and it'll help get your bubbles out. Now seeing as this is material, you're not going to have a whole lot of problems with that. So I don't feel the need to do that. I'm just kind of playing with it a little bit because it's just a little, still a little too off-center for my liking. So I'm just kind of playing with that and moving it around, making it nice and tight so I can get it really on center. Okay, now, once you've got it on, we are going to take a nice thick coat of the Mod Podge glue, and I am starting at my seam, where the seam connects, and I'm putting that glue on so that I'm not going against it and lifting it back up. I'm, I'm going the opposite direction, or should say the same direction that the material is folding over, so that it doesn't pull it up. Now the second coating will dry and stiffen the material 
and it'll kind of soak through that top layer of material and give it the nice hardness that it needs so that it looks more like, you know, a whole glass piece. Very simple to do. So, as long as you don't know, here's the fun part. All right, going to get these cheaters on again. And the first thing I thought I'd start with, I found this little uh, burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And it's got, uh, doesn't have wire or anything in it. Let me see if I can get this little, there's a sticky tape on, get that off. Uh, the edges of this are not finished. It's got the rough edge, okay? And I actually kind of like that because I wanted it to be uh, a little more rustic looking. And I, what I'm going to want to do is decorate this jar by putting this around the center. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of get a little measurement of about how much I'm going to need. And we'll cut that off. <clears throat> now, one edge is a little more raw and frayed than the other. So to kind of make them even, I'm just going to take a couple of these little side pieces out, and there you have it. Now they both got little fringes on there, which I like. Let's move you out of the way, little fella. We'll get to you next. Okay. Now, I just want to kind of eyeball it and see about center. Got something on there. Because I want it right in the middle. So I'm going to put it around the middle first, and I'm going to hold it there before I put any hot glue and attach it, because I just I don't want it to go anywhere, and I don't want to remeasure. And I'm going to open a little flap, and towards the back, where we're going to seam it together, I'm just going to put a dab of hot glue, and I'm going to stick that piece down. Don't get your fingers in the hot glue, because it will burn you. And then once that side's down, I'm just going to put me a little line of hot glue down here on the other side. Take this by the edges, make it even, and tack it down. Now sometimes, instead of getting my fingers in that glue, I'll take the back side of my scissors, or you can use a little spatula. I've seen people use little spatulas to uh, pat that down. And they do make little silicone... Uh, I believe they're called hot glue spatulas that are made of silicone. And uh, they work real good, but you know, I, like I said, I'm a, I'm a keep it real kind of person and uh, if I don't have to buy something, if I come up with something, use something, make something that'll do just the same, that's what I'm going to do. So that's our first step. I'm going to wrap that around there. Now, And you might think I'm kind of doing this backwards, but I'm not. I, I don't think. It's just what I want to do. Everybody's seen where you use twine to tie around things and make it look nice. And I love that look. So we are going to do that. I'm going to start with the back of my jar <clears throat> and a piece of twine. And you can get this twine at the dollar store. Uh, dollar Tree, Dollar Store, either one. Uh, I just happened to find this really cute little roll of twine. It's 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 on a twiner. Uh, that's what I'm calling it. Uh, but I found this at a, another little closeout store that we have uh, around our area, and that store is called Dirt Dirt, as in the dirt in the ground, cheap. And it is dirt cheap because they get a lot of closeout things that uh, come from other places that have closed out and then they close out their closeouts and they go to dirt cheap. So I found this little spool, believe it or not, believe it or not, it was 90% off and I found these little spools for 25 cents. So I bought every one of them they had. That's what I do. When I find something a good deal, I and I know I'm going to use it, I will buy it all. All right, we'll start with a little bead of hot glue 
and I'm going to put my twine right up to the top. Now I'm not going to put it on this top edge because this is a flame candle. It's going to be lit. I don't want anything catching fire. Not twine, not material, not nothing. So I'm putting it around the outside edge. I'm not going to put it around the top. The top's just going to stay glass. The last thing we need to do is have something beautiful and, and make it cause a, a fire or a problem. That's just, that's not in the game. So sometimes you got to think when you craft, and especially if you're working with candles that you're going to light rather than the LED candles, and say, you know, I need to be careful where I place that, whether it be a bow or an embellishment. Need me another glue stick. But I, I do put a bead of hot glue around this whole edge as I'm starting, because that way it is all attached real good. And then we've got our pretty little top edge. Now, you got a pretty little top edge. I want a pretty little bottom edge. I want that finished too. So I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom. I'm thinking that before I glue that leaf, see I'm doing, I'm doing as I'm going, so bear with me. I'm going to take a little bit of this, this wire pit. Uh, let me get my nippers. I, I didn't think about maybe needing some nippers. I this, it may not be a fancy craft room, but I got everything I need right within my reach. So, so that works and that's nice. <clears throat> I'm gonna take my handy dandy little nippers here because that's kind of tough wire. Cut me a little piece off. And, and since it's wire, I'm gonna kind of shape it round before I hot glue it. That way, I don't have such a difficult time making it stick. Now I'm attaching it to the back and bringing it around to the front. And I'm going to hold it on there and just put a little dab of hot glue under this wire up here where I'm going to have other embellishments and you won't really see the dab of hot glue. And I'm going to hold it on there Give it a couple blows and just hold on to it for a second while it dries. Hot glue does dry pretty quick, but it does take a sec. And if you let go of it too fast, then you're just going to lose your bond. And I don't want to do that. And now I'm going to put me a little dab under the back here, so that'll hold there. Now I can put my leaf on that. That, Yeah, that's what I needed. That's what I needed. And I think I'm going to end up on the jars putting one leaf going one direction, one the other. All right, place your leaf or embellishment, whatever it may be. You may have a little pumpkin you want to put on there. That'd be awful cute. I, I didn't have any, and I did have these leaves, and I just kind of wanted it to look more natural because my little vignette over my fireplace on my mantle is uh, more traditional this year. It's the oranges and the leaves and pretty flowers. So I kind of wanted to stick with that. So that's why I did the leaf. Now show you what that looks like so far. So there it is so far. I want this leaf to go out this way. Now my other jar, I want my leaf to go the opposite way because I'm going to put them at each end of my vignette on my mantle. And I want it to be simple. I, I didn't want real fancy. <clears throat> so that's my little leaf. And I and actually kind of worked out good because actually a couple of them little pit berries come right up there through that leaf. And I thought that was kind of cute. So then I'm going to just take a piece of this twine. I'm not measuring anything. And all I'm going to do is tie a shoelace bow. No, nothing fancy. Just just as if you're tying your shoelace. And I'm going to tie it nice and tight. And I'm going to leave those, those ends hanging down because I can always trim those off. 
later if I need to. And then I'm just going to hot glue it on. Not quite in the center of my leaf, but kind of so those little pit berries, I'll show you here in a second, uh, glue it like this here, just above that little pit berry, so the pit berries are hanging down around the bottom. I think that looks kind of nice. And then I'm just going to kind of determine how long I want my twine to be. I don't want it too long, but I also don't want it short and stubby. I want it to kind of flow down there. And then there you have it. So, I'm going to go and I'm going to finish up the other one. And when we get done, I'm going to set them up on my mantelpiece, light them up, and we're going to see what they look like. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the finish. Pretty cute. Pretty cute. If you love creating and being creative, come on back and see me again, y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your support. And like me. Share. Subscribe to my channel. Click the little bell thingy, my bobber, at the bottom. That way you'll know when I upload another video. And please, tell your friends and family. Tell them to come on over to Everything Home. We'll make something. We'll figure out something. We'll take Thrift Store out and turn it into Upscale Wow. And remember, keep it real, everybody. Be yourself. Keep it real. Be true. And always, always stay uniquely you. Thanks, y'all. See you next time.